Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, we are here. Good evening, everyone. And uh, um, well, this became a, a tradition since uh, we started the show. But once again, I want to say that I'm really sorry for uh, for being late. But damn, so many things happening, not having enough of time. And I've been working on this fight, on those all these clips that I, that I'm about I'm about to show you. I've been working. was the, the exact reason why why we are late. Corruption in boxing, unfortunately, tonight isn't able to be here with us. Uh, but uh, for sure, we'll have him on the, on the next episode, as, uh, of course, he's one half of this show. So anyways, I have all we need. Hear me well, guys. Hello to Philip Carl Roberts. And yeah, like I told you guys, 
really sorry for waiting. Uh, it was not my intention to 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 to, to waste your time. But yeah, it is what it is. It's not always easy to be on time, especially for me. Intangible, big up, OG, Boogie, Triple J. Thank you for being here. Okay, so hold on just a moment. Alone. Hello. Uh, by the way, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a question that I wanted to ask everyone. Uh, is it buffering for uh, for use? Because to me, it was buffering at the beginning while I was playing the intro track. So I'm uh, I'm really worried. I'm hoping it's not buffering anymore. I'm really hoping it's okay now. But yeah. We'll see. Anyways, yeah, I have many, many, many clips of uh, both of these fighters that I'm about to to play. I, I, I wasn't even, uh, I didn't have enough of time to to prepare every single one that I wanted to prepare. But yeah. Hold on. Yeah, so I'm preparing them. I mean, I'm getting them ready to play them. Just give me a second and we'll start right now. By the way, everybody in the chat room, who are you picking? Yoka or Tanaka? Tell me your thoughts <laughs> and uh, tell me later if if uh, this breakdown helps you change your mind, possibly. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I figured out that uh, right now it shouldn't be buffering anymore. Well, that's great because, oh man, a lot of things happening over here. Okay, so anyways, let's share the, the first clip. Let me share the screen. Okay, so alone or alone has yoka he's speaking yoka yeah it's it's interesting guys because uh, because since this fight was made uh before me doing my own uh, film study on this fight i was speaking yoka too but i can tell you one thing now i'm i'm really undecided so many things more and plus i've been uh working on nothing but those clips for uh for a week or more so my my brain is scrambled i cannot even think straight yeah 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 i i, I was watching both parts of a bda of uh his breakdown of the fight yeah big up to them big up to mr bda shout out to the whole crew yeah, I was enjoying in, um, uh, his film study, yeah. And uh, yeah, so here we are with another one. Uh, okay, so... It's about Ioka and his angles. So yeah, we are starting with Ioka. He faints. See, for example, it's not very visible what he's doing, but uh, being that uh, has uh, 
left glove is in front of Sintron's right glove, and the Elka's right glove is uh, right in front of Sintron's left glove. So that he steps aside to the left. So this way, his right hand, um, Sintron's left hand, isn't anymore in the way of his right hand, and his right hand is between Sintron's two hands. Not only that, but after throwing that overhand right, being defensively responsible that he is, he places his glove on Sintron's guard and exits on, uh, on the other side. Yeah, as you can see, this is not the, um, the first example isn't the only way uh, he's setting up angles. <laughs> there are, of course, many ways to do it. So that's why in every clip, I have uh, multiple examples. Like here, for example, he's circling towards uh, Sintron's southpaw rear left hand. He is moving laterally to the right, expecting Sintron's left hand that he catches on his guard. Then, after blocking it, uh, first thing he does is uh, pushing his lead shoulder into him to rotate and uh, throw punches, uh, being that from this position he's on the outside of Sintron's left hand, uh, Sintron cannot use it, so the only thing he can do is uh, to try to rotate and utilize his right hand. By, by this time, Yoka is taking an extra step, stepping even deeper behind that left hand and throws, hits him with an overhand right. Yeah, let's see it again. Yeah, as uh, and we'll see later more about his pivots. But here is how he he's pivoting out because Arojo had him on the ropes. He he ducks underneath his right hand and uh, pivots outside of it. He's still pivoting, and uh, keep in mind Arojo is uh, pivoting with him basically mirroring Ioka, trying trying to pivot with him in order not to get, not to let Ioka get to the outside angle. But then Ioka jabs and makes a small pause because while Arojo is turning, Ioka knows that uh, while while Arojo is turning on his left foot, he's not able to throw a punch with his right hand. So he waits for him to, to throw, and he knew that he's going to throw that either left jab while turning or the left hook. He waits for it, times it well, dips underneath, and still finds himself outside of his left hand. See how he was... Basically, he was pivoting towards his towards Arojo's right hand, and uh, Arojo was pivoting with him. But then he makes a pause and finds finds himself on the other side. Yeah, this example, see this, this is something that Yoka does a lot. Okay, uh, setting up uh, the overhand right, he does it in many ways. But see how while Arojo is stepping in with the jab, uh, Yoka 
Dux at the, at the same time places his left foot forward and to the left. And we'll see why. Yeah, right now his, uh, his upper body being that he, while well, he ducked or kind of slapped a bit to the right underneath uh, Arojo's jab in order to, to throw this overhand right counter from the outside, being that he his upper body is slipping to the outside while he's placing his left foot to the left. And once he moves his upper body during this overhand right punch, at this moment, his upper body is over his left foot that he earlier placed uh, further to the left. And he can throw a left hook and pivots out on that same foot. Big up to Reversely and Sh the Shepherd of Sons in the chat. Big up to both of them. Yeah, Reverse saying this is a 50-50 fight. I would say so because Reverse, I don't know if you caught me uh, earlier, a bit earlier while, while I was talking about it, but for months I've been picking Yoka. Um, I was kind of giving him 60 to 40, 65 to 35, maybe not that much, but kind of favoring Yoka. But the thing is, after <laughs> after doing all these film studies privately before showing them to you and uh, being that, my, my brain is scrambled. I've been doing nothing but thinking about this fight and doing preparing this breakdown i'm not sure anyone anyone anymore who i'm picking <laughs> oh intangible big uh, huge huge uh, to say that he's a huge fan of tanaka is is an understatement I'm just just read it <laughs> read his comment yeah Okay, so this is Ioka adapting to check hook, but hold on. Okay, the title is bad, but in fact, we'll see later what what Tanaka likes to do is to side, just like Nietes is doing, just to just to entice his opponent to, to lean back and try to counter him while he pulls his weight back over his uh, rear foot, just like Donny Nietes is doing here, and uh, usually throw a check hook and pivot out or uh, a left hook uh, straight right counter. And like we see, this is the end of the first round. And uh, Don Inietes was able to do so. But in the very next round, he tries to do the same thing. But instead of... Uh, of Yoka trying to counter him, stepping in with the jab again, this time he does something, something different. First of all, he's, uh, he knows, he's uh, aware of uh, what Nietes is trying to do, what punches he's trying to set up, because he's in uh, the exactly the same position as in the previous round. He gets the jab of Don Nietes on, on the top of his head, but at the same time, And right now, while he's uh, going towards Nietes, and uh, Nietes already pulled his weight back over his rear foot, he has his left hook ready and uh, lifts up his, uh, his right glove. And you'll see later, he usually does a 
an excellent job of protecting himself from the left hooks. But we'll see the, the other problems that he has in, uh, in many of his fights. <laughs> okay. And let's go to the next clip. Yeah, by the way, like you like you see, I was not able, I didn't have enough of time to really prepare prepare the clips to, to, to play them in the right order. So that's a bummer, but I'll make sure to, to play all of them and speak about them. Like right now, here is Yoka and his body punches. This is a clip that I really enjoy. He's fainting, fainting with his hands up and down, like he likes to do a lot. And then, <laughs> look at this faint or fake. Uh, after fainting with his, uh, especially with his lead hand up and down, <laughs> he slaps down. Sintron's guard while stepping in um, and getting his weight underneath his rear foot to throw the right hand. So you would think that he's about to, to go upstairs because uh, being that he's slapping down Sintron's guard, he's trying to pull his guard down in order to land uh, an overhand or a hook upstairs and uh, you see how how it makes Sintron right, right after feeling Ioka's glove slapping down his left glove he immediately tries to to pull it up and uh, Ioka lands uh, a right hook just behind uh, just behind his elbow and lands another one and another one the uh, yoka getting dirty a bit uh, that's that's how he he likes to, to work on the time that i saw him doing it but yeah first yeah he has him he has Sintron in this crouching position, then leave his, leaves his glove behind his back, pulling him down and trying to, to land a body shot that was maybe even too low, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also saw him uh, landing some uh, left hooks on the hips, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, that's Yoka for you. But we'll see. This is uh, this is far away from being uh, from being his <laughs> only way to, to to set up body punches or uh, fight on the inside by being using illegal tactics. But you'll see, he's uh, he's extremely skilled. Okay, let's go to the next clip. Ioka changing levels. He feints a body shot, goes with uh, with the lead hand upstairs, scoring an uppercut, then goes back downstairs to the right side of the body, and then the left. Here he he feints stepping in. He feints a jab upstairs, downstairs, and from this low position, he throws uh, an overhand right. A really nice setup, but uh, Arojo was aware of it and uh, wasn't biting his feint. So instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, please, instead of jabbing back at Ioka, he keeps his uh, lead glove 
right in front right in front of his face but here we, we see Yoka again changing levels dipping down and then bam and see at the same time what he's doing throwing his left hook while uh, see how he he starts this left hook with uh, his upper body over his and during this punch he turns really nice punching technique uh, at the same time it helps him prevent being countered because the during this punch, he's moving his upper body over his back foot and uh, is changing. Basically, what he's doing is changing uh, the range at which his uh, his upper body is placed from uh, being uh, from being placed on the inside back to mid range. Mm, interesting. Alone is saying uh, you have been watching Joshua. So uh, yeah, I uh, I wasn't really studying uh, Joshua. So uh, is he doing using some of the similar tactics that Joshua is using? Probably. I'm not saying it's not the case. I'm just I'm just being curious. <clears throat> yeah. So. Here we are going to to a first big problem that Kazuto Ioka has, and well, again, it depends. Uh, I named this clip "Countering in Combinations." So, what this clip is about is that Ioka Oto, and you'll see later, he's amazing with his hands and setting up punches, setting up body shots. But the thing is, and in that regard, he's similar to Tanaka. And that is that uh, when he's setting up his punches, he, OK, it's natural to <laughs> to use the, the light punches to set up the harder ones. But while doing so, if he's in front of an opponent, like he was in front of Arojo, who was punching with him in combinations and not carrying, uh, you, you know, not just, he was not giving Ioka an easy time, a free time to set up his punches while doing nothing. No, the, the, the moment Yoka was starting to set up his punches by throwing light punches, changing levels, opening up himself, uh, and Arojo would start throwing his own punches at the very same moment. And especially doing it in combos, it was making Ioka. It, 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 he was making it extremely difficult for uh, for Ioka to to do anything. Uh, I don't know how to to, to explain it. It's kind of because uh, Ioka, he's very. Uh, yeah, he's very technical at mid and uh, short range, setting up his punches, but and uh, he's uh, really clever. But at the same time, he's not uh, at mid range and short range. He isn't what what he isn't doing. Yoka isn't really. Uh, throwing fluid combos with authority. And uh, that's my real problem because, because as you can see, when he's in front of an opponent who's not giving him respect or uh, letting him set his punches, but he's instead countering him in combos with, uh, with volume while setting his punches with 
with light punches. And this is what you're getting. Every time Yoka dips and uh, leaves himself open, he uses that time to, to throw punches and bunches. And in every single of those clips I'm showing you from, uh, from this video, he's leaning down, changing levels because he's looking to set up his punches. Like here, for example, he's dipping down. Yeah, he's uh, throwing an overhand right, but it's a right it's a light, sorry, light overhand light, <laughs> right? And see how during that overhand right, he, he placed his upper body over his left knee. So, and uh, slipped on the outside to the left. So he was looking to throw a left hook to the body, to the liver. But then after this right hand, Arojo pulls back and pivots on his uh, left foot. So Yoka sees that he's too far away, so he cannot land that left hook. Um, yeah, but by the way, this is dangerous for uh, for Yoka, but it's really questionable to use it. Yeah, sometimes he does it, but I never really saw him uh, trying to especially to counter in bunches. Yeah, he would, uh, when he gets in his rhythm, he would uh, throw uh, four or five uh, piece combo, then uh, take half a step back and uh, try to, to get back in with, with the jab, then continue throwing punches. But I would say, in my opinion, from what I've, from what I've seen, Tanaka is kind of, for him, it's more natural to 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 throw his combos and then wait for his turn to to to, to throw another combo. I, I mean, yeah, of course, he's he's countering. I, I I've seen him uh, throwing check hooks and uh, even sometimes uh, countering in combinations. But I would say that that's. That's not something that he usually does because I, what I'm seeing him doing is throwing his combos, explosive combos indeed, but uh, when he's allowed to, to, to work. And we'll see, we'll get back to that later. You, you see Tanaka, he's able, or I'm trying to say he's more than able to to hurt you, okay, in, in these instances that I was showing you, but it's really questionable to me. Uh, is he really go going to... To, 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 to fight him like this, like Arojo was doing. Uh, it's not something really natural to him. And once again, we'll see later why, but at the same time, you never know, even, you know, we never know how, how, how well these fighters are going to, to adapt to each other. And that's another thing that we have to keep in mind. Uh, there are some things that, especially the clever, small, smart, talented fighters, they're able to, to, to show you something that they were not showing you before, you know. And uh, you can make a case that both of them, Tanaka and Yoka, are able to triple JJJ big up. So, I, I mean, Triple JJJ, Shep, Duck, that's a, that's a holy trinity of, <laughs> of, of uh, well, of YTBC chat rooms. Uh, what's this clip? Yeah. Okay, countering the overhand right counters.
Uh, yeah, like I told you, Tanaka is someone who likes to, to step in with his jab and uh, just like Aroh is doing here, he steps with his jab forward and, uh, well, jabbing, of course, his upper body is ending over his front knee. But he does so to, to, to entice his opponent to step in and counter him while he's placing his weight back on his rear foot while pivoting. Tanaka loves to do those same things. And yeah, check hook, not, not a really good one. Catches Yoka. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll see more of it, but yeah, keep in mind that that's, that's, that's also something that Yoka needs to, In the next clip, Yoka cutting out the ring. I mean, it's it's also thanks to his balance that he's so good at cutting off the ring because he rarely jumps up in the air, uh, even when he's bouncing. He's, he's uh, keeping a really good balance and he's trying to keep his uh, feet as close to the ground as possible. Look here, Sintron steps in, pivots out, and Ioka is immediately pivoting with him. And um, instead of rushing towards him, he immediately starts taking the, the, the lateral steps to, to cut off the ring again. So instead, from this point, instead of rushing towards heavier syndrome, he's taking a much smarter approach. So yeah, and uh, yeah, when when it comes to cut, cutting off the ring, ring I think uh, Ioka is uh, way more, uh, way better than uh, than Tanaka. But then we, we we'll see there are also some problems with. I mean, there, there are many things that each other could exploit. But l let's see a couple of more things, really clever things of how he cuts off the ring. Sintron moving towards Yoka's right. And still, he's doing a great job cutting off the ring. Yeah. Hold on. You'll see, uh, especially in the following clips, how he's able to to even cut to to, to use the feints to cut off the ring. But but see here, uh, Sintrons is using the lateral movement, moving to the left trying to to make Ioka follow him and step into the left and then uh, get out on the other side. And uh, while he's exiting on the outside of Ioka's lead foot, again, Ioka at the same time being careful, defending himself from a possible jab, but at the same time, he's able to cut off the ring really, really, really great job. This reminds me of, of a move that the Duran used uh, against Leonard in the first fight to cut off the ring. See how it's time to to 
to to for example here right here what what the beginners would do they would first place their front foot uh rear foot sorry the right foot forward and then try to 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 follow Sintron towards the left by but by the that time Sintron would be too far away so he, so he just pivots on his rear foot while being uh, defensively responsible and is already at the center of the ring and in one move one pivot at the cent at almost the center of the ring he already cut off a half of the ring and uh, has Synchron in front of him. You can see that Yoke is an extremely schooled fighter, a well-schooled fighter. Yeah, mm. pushing him back, I mean, preventing Synchron from exiting outside of his lead left foot by fainting a punch. By the way, this is something that, well, I'm not gonna get into that because I have a lot of clips to show you. <laughs> but, but, but see, Sintron is in front of him, prevents him from going outside of his left by fainting by uh, by fainting with his lead hand, then as Sintron tries to, to move to the left or towards uh, outside of Yoka's right hand, he throws another feint. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's really... Um, the psychology and then nails him with uh, with the jab here is something similar yeah he weaves that lead hand in front of him to to let him know that it's not going to be possible for him to to move outside of that left hand of Yoka because yeah, this is another example of how <laughs> see how he he goes in zigzag. I mean, uh, while moving forward, he's. Uh, covering a lot of a lot of ground okay let's go to the next clip this is going to be interesting Ioka's defense <laughs> shut, shut out Yeah, let me share the screen. <laughs> Extremely well-schooled fighter. See how he keeps his right glove right next to, to his head. And uh, keep in mind that Yoka likes uh, sorry, Tanaka, and we'll see later. He loves to slip on the inside of the opponent's jab and then, uh, yeah, slip to the left and uh, set up his left hooks to the body, left uppercuts from there, and pivot out. But, yeah, EOK is, uh, is preventing it here. And another very, very similar situation, although... Nieta is throwing his uppercut, his left uppercut, from a longer range. 
but see yet another example again he's he's blocking that and pivoting out at the same time and we'll get later to to how how Yoka does with pivots but also Tanaka how he moves his upper body over his back foot taking a back step and then Sintron tries to catch him while this time Yoke is moving forward but while Yoke is taking that step forward he's again placing his uh, upper body over his back foot and uh, has his his right right glove there to to parry that punch and then on top of that well a little taste of Ioka's pivots he used it a lot as a defensive move again this situation we already saw it after throwing the overhand right and uh, stepping to his right on the outside he places his glove on Sintron's guard to prevent him from throwing so yeah once again defensively responsible uh, here after throwing uh, and uh, we'll talk we'll also talk about how he's setting setting the traps for this right hand but see after even after missing with it the first thing he does in this position is dropping his forearm and uh, while well, he has his right shoulder there and he even tries to you know to get close to to Sintron's right arm to smother him and he pivots out same thing here where, while moving laterally he blocks that left shove, shovel hook or whatever by Sintron and then he steps in with his shoulder to smother him and uh, moves further to the outside angle once again while pivoting out he's uh, he was keeping his hands at the right place then shifting his upper body over his lift rear foot sorry then pivoting out see he after punching on the inside he keeps his right glove on Arojo's left upper arm then <laughs> but Arojo is making his rear hand free and uh, Yoka leaning on his shoulder He's Arroyo, sorry. Arroyo is trying to, to make some room for his rear uppercut. And uh, Ioka times it well. So he slips on the outside just at the right moment. And now he's, he's, uh, he's pivoting towards uh, Arroyo's right. And he, he sees uh, Arojo is telegraphing that with his left foot. He's telegraphing that left hook, his or uppercut, he's about to throw. See, already from here, in that he's not throwing it upstairs. 
he he defends himself by putting his right glove next to to his face and his body and goes towards uh, the punch to, to block it, to smother it. Good catch and shoot, head movement, and then after going back to mid-range, he still keeps his uh, his right glove next to his chin. Again, pivoting out at such a short range, he he does a great job of uh, putting his hands up because he knows while pivoting is uh, close enough to his opponent. Okay, I already showed you, spoke about this one, the way he shifts his upper body from his left back to his rear foot while drawing a left hook. Okay, let's go to the next one. But first, just give me a second to light up my cigarette. Yes, so this is about Ioka and uh, disrupting his opponent's timing. He steps in from the outside, <laughs> makes a small pause, and at the same time uh, is uh, protecting him with his left arm, left forearm, just like Golovkin. So instead of stepping in with the jab and uh, following it immediately with the right uppercut, with the rear uppercut, he makes that small pause with which makes Nietes react. And then once he, he got him off balance and prevented him from possibly timing him with the counter, he he sneaks in that rear uppercut to the body. Okay, the next one. Yuck and his explosive footwork. I mean, to me, in this fight, he was kind of a bit slow, lethargic, but he was able to explode here very nice. Um, I mean, what Arroyo is doing here, as you can see, he steps back, he's moving laterally, bouncing. Uh, and um, they're moving, I mean, Yoke is moving towards him, but they're moving at the same pace. Arroyo steps to his left, bounce to his left. Um, Yoka is following him. But now, Yoka, what he does is changes his uh, foot speed. He explodes towards him with the one to kind of like what Pekia loved to do, especially in his younger days. He, he he pushes himself forward with the with the one two, and nails him. And as you can see, uh, Arroyo was trying to to throw a check hook and pivot out. Already here, you could see that he's preparing to throw that check hook, and he's pivoting, but Yoka catches him.
another interesting oh hold on this one is going to be about uh, eocas veins see how he's uh, bouncing from his left to the right moving his head his hands and body moving it from from left to the right foot and back to the other one but <laughs> now he i'm not sure if this was this was maybe not a faint, maybe just uh, a case of uh, an example of how Yoka's timing is so, so good. He faints a jab, goes in for a, for a right hand upstairs, but he already sees Sintron stepping out of range. And then Sintron stepped out and is about to counter him with the straight southpaw left. And uh, while Ioka is still coming forward, he he just drops his, uh, you know, he gets um, a, once again a solid connection with uh, with the canvas. I don't know how to to say it properly in English, but. See after that right hand how he's leaning in and jumping, placing his his feet forward. He slips to the outside and catches him with the left hand. I mean, I just I'll just let you see it for yourself. You see what I'm trying to say. I'm just unable to explain it in 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 English. Yeah, we already saw this faint. Both of them, in fact. Eok and his head movement. So this one. Yeah, probably, I, I mean, probably the best, uh, the best example of his upper body movement, head movement, is his fight against Pelikte, where he was so sharp and on point, but I... Man, I went through 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 many of his fights, and plus, uh, Pelik is not really fighting, not throwing punches the same way like Tanaka does. So there was a lot of room in between Pelik's punches. But here again, see how he he sets them up. He steps to the right, and he times his opponents trying to to catch him very well because while stepping to the right he sees Arroyo coming in and he immediately drops his weight over his left foot slips on the outside and runs him in into an overhand right okay right now we we are going to get into another real problem that Ioka may have against Tanaka. We see Pelikte here throwing one, two, then overreaching with it, and Ioka thinks that uh, that he's safe enough to, to step back and counter him while Pelikte is off balance. But Pelikta was quick to find his balance 
and caught him with one two. And uh, keep in mind that this was not the only time this happened uh, in this fight. I think that it happened to about three or two times in total. So this was not the only case of this of this happening to to Yoke in this very fight. Let's go to the next one. Ioka inside fighting. This year, I, I think this is uh, gonna be a rather lengthy part because there is there is a lot to, a lot to say about Ioka and his inside fighting. Uh, both good and bad. Good and bad. Some really beautiful moves, but also some moves that. I mean, that may be problematic against Tanaka. Here we see him leaning over Nietes' right shoulder after Nietes threw that short right hook. He's placing his gloves on Nietes' gloves, and we, I mean, not Vives. He steps out back to mid range. He was waiting for for Nietes to throw a left hook. Probably wasn't expecting such a short left hook. It, it probably took him off balance a bit, pushed pushed him back, but at the same time he's disengaging from uh, from. Countering it, he does this a lot with his uh, with his left hook. After being on the inside, he uh, he waits for for his opponent to throw throw a punch, and he steps back at the time to mid range and then throw a left hook. Uh, it can be deadly, and he's back to to short range. See how he's uh, he's fighting for uh, for that position. He, he's looking to go shoulder to shoulder in order to pivot out. He's pushing Yetis back and getting his feet, especially his right foot, outside in order to pivot out and throw a left hook. And that's that's something that he likes to he likes to do a lot. Uh, but here's the problem. Again, he's uh, trying to smother Nietes, but at the same time, he's he's looking to to pivot out outside of Nietes's left shoulder. But while doing so, he allows uh, Nietes to to free his uh, his rear hand. And he hits an overhand right, and um, that's my problem. <laughs> we'll compare um, Ryochi Taguchi's inside game to to Yoka's, and I think uh, Taguchi's game plan on the inside was much better. I mean, we'll yet to see how Yoka is going to to choose to fight Tanaka on the inside. But I see potentially I'll see some problems here. He uh, he looks to to push Nietes back with his hand head and smother him, push him back a bit with his forearm to to create the room for for the left uppercut and goes back outside. Now this this is a really beautiful move. He he times Nietes's overhand right well. He slips to the outside. See how he he protects himself with his right glove, and uh, goes with that right shoulder into Nietes's uh, right shoulder, and then he while keeping his his chest on Nietes's shoulder. He pivots out on the outside and lands a very short uppercut. Really beautiful work 
probably not didn't land cleanly, but really nice. Here he views again uh, underneath Nietes's overhand right, and now he as Nietes is already low and he's shorter than him. Uh, <laughs> Yoke goes even lower in order to push Nietes up to, to pull him up, set his left foot, makes room for his left uppercut, really sneaky uppercut. See, this is, this is uh, what I was talking about earlier. First of all, he, uh, okay, Sintron is a southpaw, but he, he sets him nice with, with footwork. He was, he, he, took, he just took a step to his right and uh, Sintron leans toward that side. And uh, while Sintron is leaning this way, Ioka just places his upper body over his other left foot. Left uppercut pushes his head with, with his glove and uh, goes to, to the other side of Sintron. Throws a right hook. And while uh, Sintron's uppercut is coming, again, uh, Ioka times it and uh, throws a beautiful left hook. But, but fuck. By disengaging from, uh, I mean, from going from short back to mid range and gets hit at the end. See another example of how he, he nicely set up his left uppercut overhand right and bomb just a short uppercut and then smothers him to, to prevent any possible counter and goes with right to the body again Sintron stepping in this <laughs> is see Yoke's, um, Yoke's left elbow how he's trying to to control it to control Sintron. He pulls him down for the uppercut. <laughs> Similar thing, yeah, I already showed you this clip. This one too. Hold on, I'm sharing the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yoke and his jab. In my opinion, Tanaka, I mean, yeah, he can get in his rhythm, especially if you allow him to get in, in, in his distance, if you, you just have your hands up and doing nothing. Yeah, he can moving and throwing his combos, pivoting towards his left, but he's not really good at at controlling the distance and with his jab. And I think that Ioka has a, a better jab. See how Pelikte is stepping, taking steps and uh, Ioka just slightly steps in, throws a clean jab, times him well. Again, here, Pelikte 
is uh, fainting and overhand right. See how he he drops, shift his weight uh, over shoulder. Let's see it again. Hold on here. Again, and third time he does it, Yoka steps in with the jab. Nicely timed once again. And let's go to the next one. <clears throat> the lateral movement of Yoka. Yeah, contrary to, to what most of the people are saying, in fact, I would prefer Yoka for his own good to, to box Tanaka and uh, be on the inside and make Tanaka come in. And just one of, the, of, of those reasons is his lateral movement. He's really uh, unpredictable with his lateral movement, really easy to, to pivot on his feet, like you can see, to, uh, to change, change the rhythm, step in when needed. And I think that he's, uh, he's uh, more, I mean, it's a no brainer, he's more difficult to hit talking and cutting off the ring and uh, we'll see clips about it but later because we have uh, many more clips oh hold on already spoke about this one, about yoke and changing levels. What's next? Hold on. And yeah, here it is. <clears throat> negating the angles although Pelikta doesn't fight like uh, like Tanaka during his attacks very often he would try to well throw avant and uh, lean to towards his left for the left hook or the left uppercut but As you can see, Yoka was doing a great job of preventing those pivots by pivoting with him. And uh, f first of all, first of all, by defending himself, see how he he parries, he weaves underneath the uppercut, he hides behind his shoulder and gets his right glove up next to his face. and pivots out. And uh, the next one. Yeah, this one is going to be really interesting. More bad news for Yoka. Yoka getting caught off balance. Yeah, so this is his very last fight. He was like, like I was telling you just a minute earlier, he was the one stalking Javier Sintron. And Sintron is a very, very talented young fighter. And uh, as you can see, a southpaw, very tall, 
uh, quick on his feet. And um, he has a lot of surprises. See how he was changing his, how he's moving laterally, basically running Yoke in while Yoke was stuck in him and And once, boom, Sintron changes the speed and gets on the outside. And same thing here. <laughs> this was really, <laughs> Sintron was showing us some, some really beautiful moves on the outside. See how he was uh, catching him, catching him flush, keeping him, keeping him resetting of balance. And the question is how how well Tanaka can do the, those same things. I would say not not as well as Sintron, but well enough where he 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 would be able to, to catch him if But but on the other hand, he's not pivoting that quick. He's not changing Anyways, you get me The next And this is another thing that I already mentioned you and the, at the beginning of, of this breakdown uh, so yeah, Yoka and him leaving openings while uh, setting up, while, while using the setup punches with some light punches, and just slowly setting them up while leaving himself open. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more clips from uh, Ioka, and then we'll get uh, we'll get to Tanaka. Let's share the screen. Ioka and the overhand right counters. Yeah, basically, like I was telling you, see, he's on the inside, setting up, I mean, first of all, himself uh, on the short, of the, of the, of the left, leave the, the, the right hand uh, free. And this is something that, unlike Yoke in these clips, Taguchi, Ryochi Taguchi was preventing much better in my opinion. Hey, big up to, to Michael Wilson from, uh, well, uh, he's, uh, he's the man on uh, pound for pound, uh, oh, uh, boxing report. <laughs> I'm always twisting uh, the, the name of your show. Sorry, uh, it's unintentional. For some reason, I always get, get confused for some reason. Anyways, uh, big up to pound for pound boxing report. To, to Michael and everyone else. Um, go go check their channel. Uh, 
have you done a breakdown on the body punching prowess of Tanaka? His ability to work and hurt guys on the inside is, I believe, an underrated aspect of his game. Absolutely, yeah, 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 Michael. I have, uh... <laughs> oh, absolutely. I have some clips prepared because definitely oh, we'll, we'll see how, how he's folding. <laughs> Jonathan Gonzalez and uh, and the other guys, even even Tanaka, with uh, with those body punches. Yeah, you know what, uh, Michael? It's I cannot remember if if I already mentioned this one, but people are talking about uh, Ioka's body punching, which is really beautiful in my opinion, and is very methodical. But <laughs> but guys with <laughs> with uppercuts to the body with body punches he's he's uh, he's very good as well maybe not as, as methodical at setting them up setting them up but also that that's also something questionable because he has a very clever he has very clever ways of setting up his body punches and we'll see it too but yeah <laughs> underrated body puncher yet deadly body puncher but yeah let's get to to okay i showed you those overhand right counters that yoka was eating now oh now this is something extremely important for yoka in my opinion one uh, one of the most important clips of this breakdown. Ioka and his overhand rights versus pivots. Just remember this clip because, and here you're going to see how good he is at, at timing the pivots of his opponents while trying to to check who came or and uh, pivot out and how precise and accurate he is with setting up his overhand right. Because that can be, can be some, uh, some bad news for Tanaka. Yeah, like I told you, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm uh, I didn't have enough of time to to set all those clips in all order. I do think it would be much better, but I've been working really nonstop on these videos up till the very beginning of the show. That's that's why I was late. But anyways, we'll get we'll touch everything. But here are Ioka's pivots. I already described you the situation, this one too. Yeah, he also likes to, to incorporate the pivots. I mean, uh, he already used them every time, but here in his traps, while well, he's setting a trap for, uh, for his right hand while moving laterally to his right, then once uh, once his opponent is stepping in with the punch, he uh, he drops his weight over his left foot. And okay, in this case, he's throwing combos. But once he's finished with his combos, he's pivoting out of range. In this case, what, what's, hold on. Okay. And again, overhand right, left hook and pivots out while keeping his guard up. Okay. 
we also saw this one, no need to, to repeat it. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, by the way, Michael in the chat room is saying Tanaka did such damage to Ryochi Taguchi with body shots that at the end of the fight, Taguchi needed assistance walking back to his corner. He damn near collapsed from the punishment. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you, you know what, uh, Michael, in fact, I do think, in my opinion, um, Ryochi Taguchi was doing a fantastic work uh, where he, he was very skilled on the inside much more skilled than uh, than Tanaka on the inside. And what I mean by that is that shoulder to shoulder distance, meaning no distance at all. <laughs> he he's, Taguchi is very technical there, but um, he was, first of all, he, he's not a devastating puncher from, uh, from what I remember. And uh, when Tanaka was doing so all the time. And even in the later rounds, you could see the, the, the shift where um, from the mid rounds on, you can see that Taguchi is not, not as active. Well, well, Tanaka is pummeling his body. And at the end, when, when they hugged at the end, the very end, after the last bell, um, Taguchi, yeah, Michael, in fact, I remember Taguchi almost uh, basically collapsing on, on oh, yeah, indeed, he collapsed on, 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 uh, on Tanaka's shoulder. Oh, sorry for the background. Yeah, but, yeah, that was extremely, <laughs> very eye-catching. But I have another similar situation for uh, for you, Michael, later, and to, to what you were saying. Um, but yeah, uh, let me first uh, get into Ioka and setting up the overhand right. Not a big science, but yeah, he's using the feints and uh, changing changing levels, dropping his. His weight low, and then coming up top. Example here, similar, a faint, fainting a jab upstairs, downstairs, then going back up with the overhand right. That was countered. Yeah, we saw this one too. Here, for example, something that I haven't I haven't showed you. Um, Ioka steps from the outside to mid range and to the left behind the jab, and while still going to the left, he drops his he changes levels. He dips and. <laughs> He basically fainting a body punch by doing so, and yet just drops his uh, his left forearm trying to block it, and uh, Ioka's left uh, left foot is already uh, way to the left, and uh, he lands in upstairs, an overhand upstairs. Um, Hold on. Sure. Uh, Michael is saying, I like how Yoke is more willing to stand in the pocket as he got older. In his earlier days, he moved a lot around the ring. Yoke has really improved at fighting center ring and uh, in close spaces. You know what, Mike, I believe you, um, but uh, I want to say, yeah, you, you are one of those, uh, well, just like corruption, who's been following Yoka for a very, very long time, 
Well, I I started following those lower divisions much much later, years later. So yeah, I was I I didn't have time to, to to watch all of his fights. So yeah, I definitely missed his earlier fights. Uh, I think that the very the oldest one from Yoka I've seen is uh, him fighting. Um, <clears throat> what's the Thai name? Oh man, that guy. But it's from like 2014, right? The the one that he lost. <clears throat> but yeah, credit to Michael and to the whole pound for pound uh, boxing report. And uh, of course, corruption, who's not here tonight. Those are, well, those are the guys who's been covering the lightweights, light, uh, I mean, light flyweights, flyweights, and all of these divisions for, uh, for years. Uh, another reason to, to, to check them out. Now you're switching ranges. Yeah, see see that double double left hook down and up, and how on that second left hook he steps out of range, and uh, same thing here, and he goes back to to the inside. And he does something similar here, although he does it with uh, with an overhand right counter while stepping out. Well, the quality of the image is terrible. That's the best version of this fight I, I could find on the internet. But while stepping out, he, he faints. Does he faint or uh, he touches uh, Nieta's uh, right glove with his left glove? But then what he really wanted to do is bomb through that short overhand right while stepping out. <laughs> Again, while well, he steps to mid range. He times that counter and counter it with his left hook and gets on the outside. Yep. Thank you for... Oh, I'm that tired. It's it's really I, I I don't know how some of the guys are doing when they're doing their streams alone. But man, <laughs> oh, even my 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 throat is tired from uh, from talking. Okay, we we have uh, three more clips from uh, from Tanaka. Yuk, ah, uh, sorry from Yoka. Yoka and his timing. See how while well, being there at short quarters throwing that uppercut and uh, Sintron is already throwing an uppercut of his own and he's quick to to react to it. And throw left hook and again move his upper body his his head or his back foot and to to mid range in catch him. Same thing here.
Okay, here comes the next one. Yoko and his traps. He's he's very sneaky, and uh, I do think that his footwork helps him. You know, because he's he's really able to at a split second he's able to to drop his weight, and uh, even while in the middle of moving or while not having a strong connection with uh, with the canvas between the, uh, his foot and canvas. He's really quick to, to drop his weight, find the uh, find the steadiness in his legs. See how first of all he's he just freed himself up from the ropes while while Pelikte had him on the ropes. He's moving laterally, Pelikte is cutting off the ring not rushing in, but he's trying to time uh, Ioka's movement, his lateral movement while he's moving to the right, step in with the jab, and Ioka, the very same moment he drops his weight over his left foot and uh, pushes off the ground mm -hmm. the, the moment Oh, okay, so Corruption is sending me a private message. He's saying he's back home, uh, asking me for a link. So great, we'll have uh, Corruption here. Uh, yeah, Corruption, just a second. Um, <laughs> let me just finish with this one. Yeah, so he's moving to, to his right. And once he sees uh, his opponent reacting, stepping in, he, at the same time, he plants his uh, right foot, pushes off of it, and uh, drops his weight, uh, his upper body over his left foot. And that's, that's the exact punch that hurt, uh, hurt Belikta and got him stopped. Here is something very similar. Um, Yoka pivoting. I mean, in fact, wait, I'll send corruption the link first. Just give me a second. Okay, corruption now got the link. Yeah, same move, different punch. Yoka again circling to his right. The moment Nietes is stepping in, he plants that right foot and pushes off, off of it and uh, leans over his left foot. But this time, it's, uh, it's a body punch with the left hook that comes in. Once again, I'm not sure if if this is a case of Yoka deliberately setting up this, if he was faking that overhand right, but it looks to me like this is not a trap that he's setting, but he was just quick enough to see a Sintron stepping out and preparing a counter. So. Uh, corruption, are you there? Feel free to, to join in uh, anytime. I'm just waiting for you to, to jump in. But anyways, yeah. Same thing here. He does sets the same trap, only that. Not, not really looking for one punch, but uh, to work, to throw combos, and then steps out. And yeah, another point. About about this trap, 
is that every time after he either throws a one punch counter or uh, or a combo he loves to to pivot out of range yeah we see it here by the way i cannot I, I mean no 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 i already asked corruption about his uh his pick for this fight but yeah i would like to to ask him a couple of questions about the fight because believe it or not i'm not i haven't i'm not sure about my pick my own pick yet I decided that I'm gonna ask him a question or who I'm going to pick officially. Yeah, as you can see, this is one of the first clip that I played for you. Again, trying to set the same trap but Arroyo was aware of it, so he steps in with the jab and pivots and uh, shifts his upper body over his back foot and catches him with a very light jab or hook, but a scoring one, nevertheless. And that's something that Tanaka loves to do, although with, uh, with more authority, with more, uh, well, with much harder left hooks doesn't do it uh, really many times per fight but he does it enough tanaka that that i already saw him using that move uh, a couple of times in every niche of his fights and finally the the last of ioka's clips that i have here before playing you the clips of Tanaka. Ioka and his untelegraphed and uh, well timed uh, straight right hands often coming in, uh, in a form of a counter punch, but not necessarily. As you can see, he's uh, he can quickly set his feet and slip in a sneaky right hand. He's basically throwing it uh, like a job, just extending it. And yeah, he's, I mean, he's dropping his weight forward, pushing off his back foot. So he's, it's. Uh, is definitely stronger than uh, than a basic jab. Early, but what I'm trying to say, it's not a devastating punch, but but a really good one, as you can see, untelegraphed, and he slips it in really well. Very sneaky punch. Yo, big up to PDA Boxing. Hello, Mr. PDA. Shout out to official scorecard. Good breakdown. Thank you. You're, you're as well. I enjoyed it. I earlier said to, um, I told uh, Alone, um, he was he was telling me about your breakdown. And I, I, I tell him, yeah, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, one more time check. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you know them already but PDA boxing the whole channel but also their own breakdown for this fight there are two parts one with Ioka and one with Tanaka made by Mr. BDA shout out to you and uh, thank you for your kind words uh, yeah so let me see Uh, 
uh, corruption you're trying to join in, but StreamYard is telling me device is not connected. So try to get in again. Corruption, if you can hear me, just uh, drop out of or try to fix your mic. Yeah, rather try to fix your mic because uh, it's, it's telling me device not connected. Okay, so guys i'm sorry just just give me uh give me literally 20 seconds i'm about to to make a pit stop <laughs> coming back just just 20 seconds Okay, and I'm back. Thank you for waiting. Hey, J. Uh I, I'm really sorry, bro, nothing personal, but uh, we, corruption and myself haven't really thought, uh, spoke about the, the guests yet. And right now I have, uh, well, you see, this took me uh, for one and a half hour to, to do only the part on uh, on Kazuto Ioka and uh, oh yeah corruption is here I'm about to add him yeah so so right now I fear we 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 won't have enough of time so big up to you nothing nothing personal please understand me don't uh, don't get me wrong but first of all we haven't talked we haven't spoke about the guests and uh, second second of all I'm not sure how many hours this this breakdown is going to last. Possibly four hours. <laughs> the way I started. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, big up, Jibuli. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Corruption Sun, Kumbamba. I had no idea that Chris Waddle had such a deep insight into Japanese flyweights. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, if I'm able to hear you. It's breaking down. Maybe it's due to my. I don't know if if it's my shitty connection or is it or your end. But I really doubt it. <laughs> Can you hear me, official? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to hear you. I'm only hearing uh, Kraftwerk sound, <laughs> computer love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people in the chat room, can you can you tell me if if you're able to to hear corruption on your end? Because I don't know what's going on.
about now? Are you there, corruption? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I I hear you trying to talk, but I, I still don't know. It's, it's probably on my end. I don't know, but I, I'm just, I'm really unable to, to understand anything you're saying. Oh, what's going on? Oh, uh, so yeah, corruption dropped out. And then now again, corruption. Um, StreamYard is telling me once more that uh, device is not connected. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you, Jipugi. Yeah, so Jipugi is telling me, yeah, he's able to, to, hear, uh, to hear corruption. It's only me that I'm unable to hear you. <sighs> Man, this shitty connection is, internet connection is making me crazy. Yeah, corruption still saying device is not connected. But not to waste any time because we have, I think I get, I have about almost 40 clips of Tanaka. So while I'm waiting for corruption, I'll just uh, continue with this breakdown. Yeah, like I was telling you, in my opinion, Kose Tanaka is, uh, is a type of guy who's, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely I see him countering, but naturally he's someone who, who waits for his own turn to, to, to punch. And uh, what I'm usually seeing from, uh, from Kose Tanaka when you open up against him and now when you're throwing your own combos, he's uh, he's basically answering by by blocking punches and trying to step out the fringe and uh, then step in with the jab, but not really not really countering uh, enough to you know. Although he definitely, and we, we will get into it, but he definitely does counter from time to time. But I'm just wondering how how often is he go, going to counter uh, Yoka? Okay, let's share the next one. And this one right here is about uh, Kose Tanaka and being upright. And this often happens uh, when he steps out of range because he thinks he's safe. And see here, yeah, he's, he's throwing a jab, but not really in a, in a balanced position to, to step in with a jab or anything. Here in this example, it looks to me like he's, uh, he's trying to slowly step in with, uh, yeah, with a lazy job with uh, trying to set up his punches. Oh, 
once again, right here, he's bouncing or he, on his toes on the outside, thinking that he's safe, he's, uh, he's away from Tanaka, from, uh, sorry, Ryochi Taguchi. And uh, just like I was uh, showing you the, the knockdown that Ioka scored against uh, against McWilliam Saroya, uh, here Kyoguchi is plodding slowly uh, towards Tanaka. Tanaka doesn't isn't looking worried, and then. He once quickly steps in with a jab, with a very long jab, and catches him. Corruption, you're in. Yeah, can you hear me all right? Uh, try to speak now, please. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. I cannot hear you. I, I hear you trying to talk, but... You still man. can't hear me, though. Because I've, I've changed um, from a system to a phone and back and forth. But I think that the chat can hear me, but... <laughs> you think you're uh, sorry, but still, still all I'm hearing is... Uh... It's some Kraftwerk sounds. <laughs> Kraftwerk. Wow. But people in the chat room, they're, uh, well, I think they're able to hear you. So it's definitely on my end. But the, the can, only, the can, only... Can, can, the, um, can the chat hear me without electronic music? <laughs> the kid. bizarre maybe it's got something to do with the um the shared screen and the film analysis that you're uploading um, <laughs> oh man <laughs> I don't know what's happening in fact someone in the chat whenever corruption is talking needs to <laughs> to type uh, to tell me what, what he's saying because I don't know I'm, uh, I'm not sure you're fuck what I'm going to do right now. Do I continue with this breakdown? Or uh... you know what corruption uh, probably was the thing maybe my my already already terrible connection is uh... just just advise He's under enough you... pressure because because um, because I'm playing those clips. I'm streaming. I'm streaming the clips. I don't know if it's because of it, but even when I'm not playing the clips, I'm still unable to hear you. So uh, I, I don't know what the fuck is happening. Just advise official to carry on. I'll be the um, the silent partner, like in the film. See no evil, hear no evil. <laughs> Intangible. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to, uh, intangible. It would be great, literally, because I'm I'm really unable to hear uh, to hear anything corruption says. <laughs> if you if you don't mind, if I was I was seriously appreciate that. But anyway, so while while we, before we find the, the way, I don't know corruption. Maybe if uh, if you can, uh, if you have a solution, 
you can maybe uh, tell me, uh, type me in the chat or on Discord, I don't know, because I'm really unable to hear you. If you have any idea of uh, how how we can do this together, or at least uh, I don't know when when I when I hear you, what we can do. When I hear you trying to speak, I can stop, let you speak, and then uh, continue with uh, with showing clips because I have no other solution. I'm not aware of what you're telling me, etc. But anyways, yeah. Fuck, this is, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, this is, and traps. I don't really remember what, what this clips, clip is about. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get into, well, yeah, he also, from time to time, as you can see here against Taguchi, he likes to, to run run his opponents into his laterally, but very rarely, not not nearly as much as uh, as Yoka. And uh, as you're going to see later, a big part of his game of Tanaka's game is about uh, moving to his left, pivoting on his left foot. He he builds a lot of, well, most of his offense by pivoting on his left foot. And uh, Tanaka as well, no, I'm about to, to share the screen. Tanaka as well has, has nice, nice timing, but not really as good as uh, as Yoka's timing. Although what he's doing here, especially in the pocket at short range, as I as I told you, he's not really active uh, when uh, when uh, when you're very active against him at short range. He usually covers up, but at the same time he's looking for the opening for for you to to throw that. Uh, right hand of yours or um, drop it down in order for him to, to counter with the left hook. So yeah, on the inside, what Yoka needs to, to be aware of is that counter left hook because yeah, here, here too, he, he does it too. Not very active on the inside and uh, he usually covers up when, uh, when you're active against him on the inside, but but be aware of that left hook. Here, this overhand right was, was really amazing. Uh, Kyoguchi in the range, a lazy jab and uh, bah. Okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> hey, corruption. Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh, try to talk again. Can you hear me now? I feel like Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> Still the same thing, bro. <laughs> Still the same thing, unable to hear you. to my internet connection than it already was on our previous shows, but I, I was definitely wrong about it. But at least in order not to waste people's time, 
I'm gonna go to the next clip. Tanaka and uh, timing uh, the lead forearm. Yeah, he's one of those who likes to create, and this this was not the only example of this. But sometimes on the inside, yeah, he likes to create the room with his lead forearm for that left uppercut. And uh, Taguchi, as you can see here, was doing a nice job timing it. Here again, only with uh, with a different punch. Yeah, intangible definitely issue with, uh, well, uh, it's an issue on my end. Uh, corruption already knows that my connection is terrible on, on the le legendary levels. <laughs> but what can I do until I uh, move? I'm looking to move out to, to find another place, <clears throat> but before that is what it is yeah in this fight uh, in between uh, Shokimura and Kose Tanaka what uh, what Sho was doing he was waiting for uh, for Tanaka to pivot and then catch him with uh, to, to time his pivots with a body shot with uh, with body shots it was uh, very clever from his uh, from his end. But now here comes another extremely important, uh, extremely important uh, part of this this breakdown. <laughs> Corruption is saying uh, official your new hair <laughs> your new haircut is corrupting the transmission. <laughs> Definitely. Oh yeah, it's definitely I'm definitely going back to, to long hair. Looking like Chris Waddle. <laughs> because that's how I was looking up till yesterday before my haircut, but intangible saying Tanaka doesn't res reset his feet after he throws counters as frequently as he should, as frequently as he should. Oh, I see, uh, I'm seeing many different problems with with him when, uh, when it comes to throwing punches, I mean, Here is Tanaka and his problems with, uh, well, with his opponents timing his pivots and uh, left hooks, check hooks. And uh, as you already remember, the, the clip where I was showing you, not Tanaka, Ioka timing his opponents and their pivots with an overhand right. You know that that Tanaka is gonna be in trouble when when it comes to to that part of their game, because like I told you, a big a big part of his uh, of his game is built upon those pivots, like here him stepping in with the jab, trying to pivot, and um, what's his name, uh, Shayan Ram something like that is already in place to to throw his jab here again he steps in with the jab steps out see trying to to make uh chayan ram what's his name i forgot it he steps in and um, Tanaka there is with the jab and then moves his upper body back over his rear foot and then tries to come in with, with the check hook.
but uh, what his opponent was doing, he just uh, threw or uh, made a feint of throwing a left uh, left hook to the body, but then he unexpectedly followed it up with uh, with an overhand right while while Tanaka was pivoting, trying to land his check hook. And uh, down he goes. Yeah, thank you, Intangible Chayanram. Right, right. Also known as Palangol CP Fresh Mart. Again, he's trying to pivot while he's, he's in range. His weight over his uh, left foot. And bam, he clips him. Kyoguchi clips him with an overhand right. Timing his pivot, his pivot very well with, uh, with oh, what is that, a right hook or uh, an overhand right around, uh, just behind his glove. One more time, as I told you, this is uh, this is just another example of how how his whole game is built upon him pivoting, you know, moving to his left and pivoting on his left foot. Well, see, he he reaches out for his uh, for a uh, for a left hook to the body to the liver. And uh, Taguchi, similar to, to Yoka, what Yoka usually does, and it is having a nice, nice defense, keeping his guard up. And bam, he pivots with the left hook. He counter pivots. Um, he counter pivots Tanaka, leaning over his left foot and about to throw a left hook and pivoting. One more time, same thing. <laughs> and again against Sho, uh, Sho Kimura, Tanaka is uh, moving to his left. And uh, it's an overhand right. And uh, see, this fight happened a long time ago. Uh, is it his? His uh, first title fight against uh, uh, Vic Saludar, I don't remember. And sure, he was not technically. I mean, he was he was much greener back then. Uh, it was in 2015, I think, against Vic Saludar. Again, lazy jab. And pivoting on his uh, on his front foot, right on the chin. Man, I hope that later. Uh, you, you know what, corruption. If uh, um, being that uh, we're currently unable to to, I, I mean, I'm unable. I'm uh, unable to hear you. Fuck, I'm tired. Uh, what I'm gonna do is try to. To go as quick as possible to explain, I mean, uh, every clip that I have of Tanaka left, and then I'll uh, restart my PC without uh, without stopping this this streaming, and then uh, try to you know to to get your thoughts if that's all right because I I don't have any any better solution right now. I think it would be the best, but yeah, here is. Telegraphing his punches, that, that's what I wrote. Yeah, and what I mean by telegraphing, 
he's pretty quick in, at doing this, but if someone studies him enough and uh, is consciously preparing for uh, for his pivots and angles and him leaning over his left foot, because in this case, what gives away what he's about to do is him leaning to, to his left. We'll see later how he, he likes to, to feint an overhand right in order to lean to his left and... Uh, get uh, get his to the liver of his opponent so I uh, with his right shoulder and that's how he he sets up uh, very often he sets up his left hook but Taguchi times it. Of course, it's not easy, and uh, he's doing it quickly. These these videos are slowed down, but if you're really studying his uh, his style, you you stand a much better chance of timing him. Just like here, again, similar case for uh, like like with Yoka. When he steps in, he he seems very often very much of his opponent and setting up his punches. With those soft, lazy punches, I mean, uh, of course, that's that's how you usually set you usually set up your punches, but that's also how he he gets hit. He gets clipped very often in the process, like here. Especially that that rear hand, he he can telegraph it, like here. All Taguchi had to do was to, to step in with <laughs> with the short jab. You see that you see from these clips that when uh, when he throws his left hand, how he he likes to make uh, make the room and drop his weight over his rear uh, rear foot in order to throw that rear uppercut. <laughs> like here too. So yeah, definitely. If, of course, it's a no-brainer. It would be much easier if you know his style very well and what's what he's about. Uh, let's share the next one. Uh, hold on. Intangible saying, when he isn't throwing, he doesn't move his upper body when he pivots. Yeah, that too, that too. But also, also when even when uh, well, I would. Oh, I'm, I'm really tired to explain it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I get you. I, for the most part, I would say that um, that, that I agree with, with what you're saying, intangible. But let's go to the next one and let's try to finish this as quick as quickly as possible before adding corruption in if he doesn't fall asleep. Yeah, switching ranges against Tanaka. So it's not him switching ranges, but his opponents. As you can see, Ryochi Taguchi is mothering him, and then uh, stepping out of Bomb, throwing a couple of punches from there, then going in, going back to, to the inside fighting, and then again, just for a bit, to, to, to disrupt him, then breaks away again, then, then go, goes back in, and then at the end, throws a jab on his way out and, uh, and counters Tanaka.
spin, throw your punches and step out. No need to. You, you can score points uh, because, like I told you, <clears throat> what Tanaka does very often is just he get he gets his uh, guard up and let you throw your punches. So you definitely can score, but you have to be to be aware of that counter left hook. But anyways, let's go to the next one. Yeah, Tanaka staying in range too much to, to set up punches. And you see how he's telegraphing them in the process, how... See, all you have to do to, to have is an opponent who's uh, who's going to prevent you from throwing your punches if you're Tanaka. Someone trying to counter you in the process, uh, like Taguchi is doing to, to Tanaka here. But also, the same goes for, uh, for Kazuto Yoka. Yeah, this is something that, well, it was... It was... Uh, hold on. Yeah, something too difficult to, to, to show in this breakdown, but while watching his fight uh, against Ryochi Taguchi, and uh, just like uh, like Michael was saying earlier in the chat room, he 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 ended that fight much fresher. And uh, keep in mind, in that fight, he wasn't really getting touched by by the body shots, especially not uh, not uh, not the big ones. While on the other way, he he was landing some some bombs there. Against against Taguchi from the mid rounds. I mean, throughout the whole fight, but especially it was especially visible from the from the mid round zone. And so, even at the late rounds against Taguchi, he was um, oh man, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, he was visibly tired. He was uh, losing the form of his punches. But was still able to push and uh, you know keep his activity high and uh, keep keep the sting on uh, on his punches. Well, in his fight against Sho Kimura, I think I saw something opposite. Although it's questionable, uh, I'm about to, to to play the clip, but uh, right before playing it, uh, I'm just want I just want to explain you that in this fight against Sho Kimura. Both of them were landing uh, great deadly body shots. And I would still say probably Tanaka was, in my opinion, at least they were catching my mind. I, I mean, I was more aware of the power and uh, the precision of Tanaka's punches, but Kimura was landing some, some great body shots throughout the whole fight on Tanaka as well. So let's see what's what's happening here. Here is right after the bell, they're hugging. And I told you how after right after the final bell of the Taguchi fight, it was Taguchi who who damn near collapsed on uh, on Kose Tanaka's shoulder. Well, in this clip, but I'm not sure. Uh, is it Tanaka dropping down due to to being tired? But it's also very possible that you know that, that he's giving respect to Shokimura, similar to how how Naoya Inoue 
was uh, doing against after right after the fight against Donito Donaire, uh, being very humble, giving him giving him respect. So it's this clip is very questionable. Maybe the case of uh, Kose Tanaka feeling those body shots and uh, being that tired, but also it could be the case of him giving Shokimura his well-deserved respect. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, if it was the case of, like I told you, those Japanese fighters are very, very humble. But let's just keep this in mind. Let's go to the next one. Let me just quickly count how many more clips of Tanak I have. Thirty three more. Okay, let's make it quick. <laughs> Yeah, another thing that uh, Ryo Chitaguchi was doing very well against Tanaka in a couple of a couple of occasions, while pivoting out and um, stepping outside of Tanaka's range. Sometimes he wasn't uh, he wasn't jabbing on his way out, but was controlling his as you can see his shoulder, his chest. So another smart move. And here is another example of it. Leaning on, on his shoulder to prevent him to, to rotate his body or even... I don't know if, if it was intentional or not, but it was definitely a great move. Hold on, I'm lost. <clears throat> Hold on. Intangible when Tanaka throws his shots, he's more than frequently he will more frequently move his upper body and sustain sustain balance to a corruption set alter the angle of his shots but in the midst of his shot selection when he isn't throwing he doesn't move his upper body he pivots <laughs> Intangible, I would have to, to, to reread the chat room tomorrow because I'm, I'm so tired that I, I cannot understand it. But let's go on. Setting up the uppercuts. Once again, oh, what I've been telling you, Tanaka's game is based around pivoting on his left foot and leaning over it to, to set him up to set up his punches. Here, a setup, jab, setup overhand right in order to, to twist his shoulders and get his uh, left glove on the outside. From there, he throws an uppercut from, 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 the, from a blind angle. Similar here, only that he throws a right hook to the body, still in order to to twist his his shoulders and get his left glove on the outside of the opponent's right glove and sneak it in. Here. He does something else. He pulls the Gucci's head down. Uh, 
see another way for him to to do it is to jab and uh, throw a setup light left hook while stepping to the left, getting his left foot outside on off Taguchi's right foot, drop his weight over his rear foot, and uh, sneak in his uppercut right in in between uh, the opponent's gloves. Yeah, this is another way he, he sets it up. Still pivoting. I mean, throwing his jab, moving to the left. He's enticing a counter from his opponent. See how when he jabs, he pulls his weight over his left foot in order to to throw this left hook and then right uppercut and exits in the other on the other side. Corruption in the chat room, he's saying this fight may just come down to heart, desire, and endurance in a war of attrition. Kose en embodies the warrior cut, and only a KO will stop him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the way he fights, yeah. <laughs> when, when you see... Uh, Kose Tanaka himself or his opponents collapsing after the fight, after their fight. <laughs> it tells you everything. But anyways, setting up the straight right. Yeah, pretty much. He sets it up in this example in a very similar fashion to, to how he, he sets up his rear uppercut that I just uh, showed you in the previous video still. From, he transfers his upper body from the inside, from his front foot, back over his rear foot for a check hook, pivot hook, whatever, in the right hand. <clears throat> yeah, and also in the pocket in this mid or short mid range, as usual, he leans over to his left throws a left hook or a, or a left uppercut and comes back up with with, with the right hand over stairs. Upstairs. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking anymore. Yeah, and uh, his fight against Baltanado as well, but I didn't have enough time to, to prepare them all. Um, Tanaka setting up the overhand right. I cannot even remember what what this clip is about. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah, faints. And this is something that Canel also really likes to use, and the other boxers as well. See how he steps in towards Taguchi, feints with his lead glove while leaning over to his left, 
and uh, his lead glove may, makes Taguchi extend his his right glove, and that's how he lands the overhand right. Okay, we we are gonna get to to angles later. Let's move on to the next. The liver shot. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, here again. He steps in from the outside, behind the jab, light jab. Now he feints a left, a rear uppercut, sorry. Which again gets his uh, left left hand outside of Taguchi's right right glove and uh, he twisted his shoulders but yeah Taguchi as well he he does a rather good job of defending himself in the pocket against the left hooks Yeah, very similar example. Step in with, with your jab. Tap the opponent's guard with your right glove while leaning over to, over your left and line the left hook. <clears throat> oh, this one you should uh, you should see it in uh, in real speed. This is just just a pure athleticism from uh, from Tanaka. But see here, still before after throwing this first left uppercut, before throwing the next one, he still twists his shoulders and taps the Gucci's guard with his right glove before landing on. Uh, his left foot and throwing the left hook. And let's go to the next one. Yeah, I mean, I already explained you what what he's doing, how he he likes to set up his left hook, his check hook. But also, just like his liver shots, he also likes to to set it up by fainting right hand and palm coming from behind with the left hook upstairs this time. There is something else. See how well he, he's throwing this this left uppercut. He's stepping outside with his right right foot, then just touches him with his right glove to occupy his guard, and then while he's transferring his upper body over to the outside angle over his right foot. He sneaks in a left hook in between uh, Taguchi's gloves. <coughs> he also likes to as you can see, something really basic. 
yet very useful, occupy uh, his guard, Taguchi's guard, with a simple jab. He steps in nicely with the jab, gets the leverage on that left hook, and the jab made him put up a high tight guard so, the, so there was enough room to follow it up with a very good left hook upstairs. Now let's go to the next one. Yeah, this is this is the continuation of of the previous previous clip, previous example. Only that this is about his jab. See how he, how he nicely manipulates the guard of um, of Taguchi. Like I told you, first it was a jab, then a left hook, then it goes back to. It was not a real jab. He was not trying to score with this jab after his left hook, but he's rather opening up Taguchi's guard. How he does it, <coughs> excuse me. He taps his left glove, basically enticing him to counter with, with, the, with the left hook. And um, Tanaka's timing is so well and in real speed, this was this move was extremely quick. The moment Taguchi opens up with that left hook, he just sneaks in a left uh, a left jab. Really beautiful move. You should see it in real speed. This video here is just a compilation of him getting timed with, with the overhand right counters. And I do think this, this would definitely be a very effective, uh, effective weapon for, uh, for Kazuto Yoka. Again, he pivots out, but Taguchi catches him. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, this is how easily he's getting disrupted by, by the lead hand, by the jabs, while he's in the range, because like I told you, he loves to, you know, to, to calmly wait, uh, stay in the range or uh, set up either wait for an opening for his left hook for a counter left hook or tap his uh, his opponents with setup punches so
this one right here that I'm about to share are the examples of Tanaka throwing a lazy jab while still staying at range in the range of his opponents basically to set up his you just see how often he was doing it against Taguchi but also against his other opponents often he would throw throw a lazy jab <coughs> and get countered <coughs> hey big up nordic thank you for for coming here and by the way check out nordic's channel as well he talks about boxing and everything really good guy and i enjoy listening to movie big up to to nordic but here yeah once again that that fight against saludar <clears throat> again indeed this fight happened many years ago but you you can see how how you can keep tanaka off balance with uh, with changing angles, pivoting around him. And I hate to repeat myself, but once again, I was telling you about him pivoting his pivots and uh, him, you know, being lazy while staying in his opponent's range. And he gets easily disrupted by, by jabs. Even Kimura was doing a good, good job of countering him with, uh, with jabs. The next clip is about uh, Kose Tanaka fighting on the... Oh, what I was able to see <clears throat> from here, from him on the inside, he usually, he can step in just like this behind the high guard to, to either catch a break or uh, or wait for his opponent to open up with usually a body shot. And here in this example, he can step out and try to counter, but uh, Kimura was already well covered, so there was no need for him to, to throw a jab. It was useless, I mean. But here we can see him waiting for Kimura to open up with body punches. Or punches point blank in order to counter him. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, and this is what I was trying to tell you. Uh, Taguchi was doing a much better job defensively on the inside than what um, Ioka, although an extremely good inside fighter, usually does. Because here, after throwing his own punches, every time after throwing his punch, he's smothering Tanaka, he's changing ranges, um, pushing him in order to, to throw a mid range shot, then going back to his chest, smothering him. Basically what Taguchi was doing, he was the one choosing when are they going to fight on the inside. He was the one dictating the tempo. See how he taps him. <laughs> he did this a couple of times. 
he tapped uh, just just slightly tapped like here tanaka on the body and tanaka <laughs> drops his elbows even more <laughs> and taguchi comes up with an overhand right and the uppercut here again see how <laughs> tanaka is uh, is reacting with his left forearm while at the same time Taguchi is creating the room or rather pushing him back and then pff, throwing an overhand right. Let's see how many more clips I have. Seventeen more. Yeah, I mean, the, this clip that I just played, it's basically about uh, how you should take the, or either Ioka should take advantage. He, he, he should lead against, uh, against Tanaka because his jab is not good enough to, to counter you. Not uh, if you're Kazutu Yoka, in my opinion. So I would, uh, and, that, and that's basically why I would, uh, I would like Yoka for his own sake to, to keep it at long range and uh, step in from the outside, etc. And. Again, these are the clips of uh, Taguchi using his head movement to evade Tanaka's punches and countering him at the same time. And that's another thing that Yoka likes to do. <clears throat> See how he throws his overhand right and uh, moves his own hand his head at the same time and makes Tanaka miss while landing his own overhand right. So this is about, well, what I already told you, him shifting his, uh, his weight from front to back foot, usually in order to, to, to set up those hooks, check hooks. So yeah, nice, nice timing and nice reflexes from Kose. Faints. Once again, this one, I explained it to you. Similar thing here. Again, just slapping that light left hook, then, then basically fainting a right hook by just tapping Tanaka's, sorry, Kyoguchi's guard, Taguchi's guard. <clears throat> now, 
now here comes another very, very interesting clip in my opinion. And this is how Jonathan Gonzalez was able to to get get out from the ropes while Tanaka had him trapped there. As you can see first, this is the very first minute of the fight. Guzman Yalto, he's a, he's a southpaw, but he runs Tanaka, who, who was following. I mean, Tanaka was careless about his defense while opened up. <laughs> and just like Yoka does, Gonzalez runs him in uh, into an overhand. I, I mean, into into a counter punch, straight left, and gets out of ropes, off the ropes. So, still remembering that counter punch that that he got run into. This time here. In the same round, he's more careful about stepping into close. But being that he was not aggressive enough, Gonzalez get, gets off the ropes. And from this point on, Gonzalez was aware that he he could escape the ropes by uh, by giving Tanaka the resistance in a form of punches. So in order to get off the ropes, what he was doing, he would use, uh, well, he would strike Tanaka with his punches in order to get him on his back foot and to step out and uh, just immediately, immediately after his punches, he would pivot out and use the lateral movement to get off the ropes. Here, again, see how he Here again, he, he, he's using the menace, which are, well, punches, you know. I don't know how to explain it, but he's using his punches to, to jump on Tanaka, make him push back, and... Uh, be make Tanaka worry about his defense pushing back at the same time and then get out. Let's go to the next one. skip this one, not important. Let me share the screen. Hey, we have um, Unrivaled Boxing Talk, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Big up. Another boxing channel with us tonight, Unrivaled. You probably already know him. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I named uh, I named this clip distance control, but oh. 
but what I mean by that, I don't think Tanaka's distance control is that great. It's only that. <clears throat> I wanted to, to, to make you aware of how he, he just threw his. Here, he just threw his punch. He backs off. And then similar to, to what, uh, what's his name? Uh, the big guy, the big tall guy that, that caught Yoka with those one-twos. I already forgot his name. Uh, Pelikte. Yeah, I think so. Pelikte. He steps out and comes back in with the one-two. So... That would be a problem for uh, for Yoka. <clears throat> Let's go to the next one. Defense. I mean, yeah, uh, no need to, to talk about it because I was uh, speaking about his defense uh, during the other clips where, where where I basically told you that, yeah, I mean, he, he does a, a rather good job, very good job of uh, preventing the left hooks, but also while using the angles and then timing him, you can catch him with, with left hooks. But other than that, when... Uh, He, his basic defense is uh, is good as well. Although I do think that Yoke is doing a better job of that of preventing the left hooks. Oh yeah, this one is interesting. Although we already we already saw Yoka defending most of these punches in the previous clips. You see how Tanaka loves to slip on the inside of, of the opponent's jab and then throw this uppercut and, and same goes uh, for him uh, slipping on the outside of, of the opponent's jab. But I also, I also saw um, Ioka getting caught by by those uppercuts a couple of times against Don Ignatis. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, I'm that tired, but... And I'm that hungry. But we are going to push through through this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more clips. Okay, counter pivots and check hooks. Every time uh, Taguchi was definitely very aware of, uh, and that's what I was telling you a bit earlier. I mean, being aware of uh, of how Tanaka is, uh, how Tanaka's offense is composed, uh, what it is based on. Doing your study on Tanaka can definitely help you because Taguchi was definitely aware of uh, all all the things that Tanaka is doing. He he knew that he loves to to circle. To the left, to to pivot, to pivot on his left foot, to pivot out, but also to to lean over his left foot. And uh, he was first of all he was aware of it, and then he was able to 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 time it to recognize those uh, those moments uh, in their fight. And so he, what he was doing, he was counter pivoting his pivots. He would pivot out. 
I'm drawing. <laughs> so you can see a jab or a hook on on his on his way way out while pivoting. Again, Taguchi pivots with him and uh, throws the left hook. Same thing again, yeah, he gets hit by a body shot and uh, his left hook upstairs and doesn't really land nicely, but you see that Taguchi knew what he was doing against Tanaka. Oh, now here comes... Uh, Well, the reason why I'm not sure that <clears throat> that Yoka would be able to, to stop Tanaka. I mean, uh, he was dropped uh, a couple of times, not only once, but three or four, maybe even five times, but the overhead, by the overhand right counters only. But uh, he's able to. He he he's extremely tough, Tanaka. Yeah, he he can get knocked down, but of course it would be a risk if someone as skillful as Yo as Yoka can hurt you. It would be a problem, but he has the skills to keep you hurt. But. I think that Tanaka is Tanaka is extremely tough, durable, and uh, he's able to to take some bombs. Um, now the thing is, how how good Ioka is with his uh, with his surprising straight right uh, while or overhand right, the one that I showed you earlier the one that he, he hurt Palikta with. That one is very, very explosive, is very surprising, catching people off guard. So that one, I mean, Ayoka is not an incredible puncher. He's not uh, that of a hard puncher, but that one punch is surprising people and uh, really hurting them. Let's go to the next one. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> Hold on. Yeah, also changing levels. So it's not Tanaka changing levels, but his opponents. And uh, yeah, like I told you, already told you about Taguchi uh, using his upper body movement, head movement, and changing levels. Uh, I mean, upper body movement, but changing levels also was very useful to him to surprise Tanaka to, to, to set up punches. And that's something that I already to told you, and I, I showed you the clips of Ioka doing so against his other opponents. So, what's this one? Tanaka catching the opponents from outside. I'm wondering what's that about. I mean, yeah, the, I'm wondering what, what I was trying to, to show with with this clip, but yeah, in fact, if, if he gets into his rhythm on the outside and nothing is coming back at him, 
then definitely yeah when uh, when he feels free and encouraged to to throw combos and and yeah like even like he he's doing here he jabs he jabs he he steps in with the right hand then steps out on his way to on his way to outside and then jumps back in with his combos now Danaka body punching I mean I could use the clips from any of his fights because in all of his fight fights he's he's really hurting his opponents but and plus here uh, Gonzalez yeah he was much smaller much lighter but but still it was impressive first see what <laughs> he he jumps in he he gets a good torque he twists his hips into those body punches here again he's jumping in trying to <laughs> trying to fold them into into see how he was pummeling Gonzalez's body really devastating body puncher if you if you let him hit you to the body with those uppercuts hooks let's see what's what's the other clip Okay, I already spoke about this. Now, here is how he likes to, to use the angles. First, you can see that he steps uh, while He's moving to his right in order to, to land a straight left. Hold on. Let me play it again. Bam. Then the same here on the other side, moving to the left to get that rear hand in between the opponent's glove and draw a straight right. Then, then again. Till now we saw how how he likes to 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 either step to to his left to to put his to place his right glove in between uh, his opponent's gloves or to step move to his right and uh, place his left glove in between uh, his opponent's his opponent's gloves again a left hook right hand and uh, now the way how he twisted his his shoulders his left glove is on the outside invisible <laughs> comes from the outside here he does something well something what Golovkin and many other fighters love to do. 
left hook to to change the angle step on the outside and pull This is, I named this clip Tanaka Adapting Let's see what's this about Hold on I'm trying to figure out, I can, can't even remember what's this about. I mean, I would guess it's adapting after him tasting some jabs, but still makes no sense to me. Yeah, it must, it must be it. Here after, yeah, after hitting some left hooks from Taguchi. When Taguchi was pivoting with him, because you can see this is already the ending of the third round of the fight. So it means that now he's aware that after his left hook to the body, um, uh, Taguchi's left hook upstairs is coming with him. <laughs> he, he knew that he had to, to lift up his well, well, of course, show a couple of do a couple of same moves a couple of times against Anika and uh, yeah normally he should be able to adapt to it uh, like yeah, like every top fighter now well I just played you all the all the clips that I prepared for tonight the thing is I'm telling you, my brain is so scrambled because of this fight, because... Hold on. Oh man, I cannot believe. Since December the 21st, I'm, I've been working every day on, on these videos, so I'm so tired even thinking about this fight. <laughs> Like I told you, like I told you in the beginning, I was, I was favoring Yoka, but right now I don't really know. Big. I still favor him, but I saw many things that see that there are two things. There are the things that. On fights or in this breakdown, the other breakdowns. Uh, but that is one thing. The other thing is fighters, at least um, the top fighters, are able to adapt and learn from from their previous mistakes. You know, so it's also a question of how how much room are you leaving to both fighters to to adapt and. Uh, for example, let's say for example Tanaka, he, uh, I was telling you that he loves to 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 throw his punches in combos, but not really, not really countering 
So if he decided to do like Arroyo and uh, was paying attention to to that part of uh, of Yoka's game, and then chooses to train for uh, throwing with with Yoka while, while he's setting up his light punches and throwing in combos, countering him in combos, uh, well. He may he may even stop him, you know. I, I mean, he or he may he may win uh, win the fight that way. And uh, something tell you that if he if he was aware of of that uh, of it as as being a problem, one of the problems for Yoka that Yoka was having difficulties with, then. Uh, then it's up to you to, to 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 judge if he he would be able to to really adapt to it in the ring, but and same goes him same goes for Yuka on the on the other hand I mean maybe stylistically he's not doing enough of of things that the that are creating problems for for Tanaka, but maybe he he adapts to it and performs even better than expected. But also doesn't doesn't mean that that they would be able able to adapt and also uh, what I was trying to say. I mean, also, you know, that fighters, every fighter have, all the fighters have their own tendencies. So, so often they get, they get back to, to what they're comfortable, not only comfortable with, but to what is natural to them. So, so it's that part of, of the equation that kind of worries me because yeah you cannot become a whole different fighters over the night uh, during one training camp but you can make some some adjustments even the small ones that that would make uh, make some serious changes in your favor and now the question to me is uh, you know to 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 calculate how How much would both of them be able to to, to change uh, for this fight? And uh, I don't really know. It's really trust me. Of all the breakdowns for the fights that I ever did, or did on this or the other other channel, and all the predictions that I ever made on YouTube. I mean, this is the, the most difficult one for me. Um, for example, for in Tanaka's favor, uh, what goes in, in, in his favor is that I do think that he can outwork, at least he can outwork uh, Ioka. <sighs> And maybe, well, you know what? It would be nice to maybe have a special episode with with corruption. I'll see with him tomorrow if if he's willing or available to do a special episode to to get his piece in to to talk about this fight. Well, as I was having some questions about this fight, uh, where I'm, I'm, I'm very undecided, and that, that could help me for my definitive pick. And it would be nice for all of you too to 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 hear what what corruption has to say about about this fight, especially since uh, these are the fighters he's been following for for a much longer time than myself. 
So I would really like to, to hear more about it. But yeah, for right now, you want look when it comes to to bedding i mean put right now put the bedding outside of it i mean uh, who do i favor to win i would say just slightly kind of 53 to 47 percent in yoke's favor <laughs> yeah <laughs> this was this was definitely this is to predictions to predicting fights but for right now I would say if Ioka although, although there are many things that, that Tanaka could do can do can overwhelm him overwhelm him can, I, I mean many things that he can do and plus even I don't know that that's one of the questions that I wanted to really ask corruption. Um, I'm not sure who would be favored on the cards. Are we going to get uh, a fair shake? I mean, both fighters are going to anyone who, who deserves the victory. Are they going to to get a fair shake, or is it going to be tilted in favor of one of the fighters? I mean, most of us were thinking that as Tanaka is a younger fighter chasing his new world title, that the decision would be given to him, especially if you consider that he okay, is about to, to retire. He came out of retirement um, in, what was that, what was that, 2018? So... If it's close, or I don't know, if um, if Tanaka gets gets the night on scorecards, another thing is <laughs> to, to say something opposite of what 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 I just said. My source for for the Asian boxing and Japanese boxing is is a Twitter account, what was their name? Asian Boxing, I think. Yeah, and they were saying that uh, Sankyo, or whatever the name of the sponsor, which is sponsoring uh, Kazuto Yo, uh, he was saying some things from some other things that, that could favor Ioka. You know, when it comes to to who's going to be given the victory. Now, to bring the betting in, uh, up till yesterday, well, I'll use the decimal odds because I don't know, I don't know how to convert the odds into the other odds, but up till yesterday, Yoka was uh, at... 2.5 and uh, Tanaka uh, the favorite at around 1.5 or 1.6 but anyways if you're picking Yoka you should probably do it as soon as possible because as close closer the fights get just like Corruption said on the last show and it's really the case and I'm seeing it, I was seeing it yesterday. The, the odds are slowly becoming more and more even. On the other hand, if you're picking Tanaka, probably the best, the best time to, to bet on the fight would be to, to wait to the very end to place your bets. Uh, like I told you, for now, for now, I'm picking Ioka. I don't know, man. Really difficult. There are many problems, as you you were able to see that I didn't like about Yoka and what he's doing on the inside. How he's how is he setting up his punches? So it may cost him, but 
Yep. Yeah, thank you for. Uh, I mean, hold on. I restarted my PC, so I cannot see your comments, nor I can uh, stop the streaming. Listening. Give me just. A minute. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so yeah, I think, well, before ending the show, I'm just going to say I'll see with corruption uh, being that uh, he was not able to, you know, we were not able to hear each other. If we are going to, to make just a short special stream where uh, he, would, uh, he would talk about this fight before it happening, or not, I don't know. I'll check it with him. Well, the way the, the stream went was crazy. As you can see, I have some real trouble with, with my connection, etc. But anyways, thank you for everyone being here. I mean, Triple JJJ, Intangible, um, Unrivaled, Nordic, um, who else was there? Michael, Shep, uh, Phil, or Philip, cannot remember. Yeah, and one more time, sorry for, for being late, but yeah, we did what, what we could do. Hope you you enjoy enjoy the fight, and uh, maybe we we come back tomorrow or on Wednesday with another special episode. I don't know. See you and uh, thank you for uh, for being here with me. Peace out.